ESPN NFL insider Field Yates with Armin and Levac, one of our favorites, one of the best for our money. And Field, we're going to hit you with softballs today. Like uh, Tom Coughlin, anything he can do to save his job? If can they find a way to not play the last 75 seconds of the fourth quarter going forward? I saw the incredible <laughs> stat compiled by, I believe, the New York Times. It noted that if the Giants only played the first 58 minutes and 45 seconds of every game this season, They'd be ten and two, which would be good enough for first in the AFC, and obviously very good for the NFC East picture. They will be winning that division in a landslide. But you know, guys, it's cliche, but they've got to find ways to finish. And I'm not sure what the exact magic button is that you press, but uh, the Dolphins, the, excuse, the Dolphins, the Giants have to find a way because the Dolphins on Monday night. I'm not sure how much of a test they are, but this is a game that the Giants has to win on Sunday in order to really have a legitimate case in the NFC. I know everybody else is sort of right there, but if you look at the Giants' remaining schedule, it's not like it gets significantly easier. You play the Panthers after that, the Vikings, the quality team, and then you finish up with the Eagles. A division game, it's always tough in Week 17. Assuming that that head coaching job for the New York Giants is open after this season, who would be the top candidates to take that gig? Man, I don't even know, but I, you know, I have a hard time envisioning that it would actually be open. And I think that maybe looking at the pool of candidates, I think a lot of people are expecting to be in demand for whatever jobs open. There are a few names that come to mind. Some of them are familiar, whether it's Josh McDaniels, the offensive coordinator of the New England Patriots, Hugh Jackson, formerly the head coach of the Raiders, now the Bengals offensive coordinator. Uh, Kyle Shanahan, the name has kind of been uh, in and out of the head coaching cycle previously. Never been a head coach, been on the radar, Adam Gase of the Bears. And then, you know, I think that both the coordinators in Carolina are going to get an extended look. Mike Shule on offense and then Sean McDermott on defense. You don't go 12-0 and by mistake. So I think that both of those coaches deserve an opportunity to at least get a look. ESPN NFL insider Field Yates with Armin and Levac on 104.5 The Team. Field, what are you hearing about Giants offensive coordinator Ben McAdoo and what the future holds for him in the NFL? Yeah, guys, I don't know that uh, a whole lot has changed uh, since the beginning of the year. I think that McAdoo has done you know, a decent job with this offense. It certainly had some high-potent passing games uh, in the two years, the near two years that Ben McAdoo has been a part of this team. Um, you know, they've been limited in some ways by the offensive line. I mean, that's hard to overcome. The injuries, they speak for themselves. Uh, losing your left tackle and will beat you before the season and all the other shuffling, that makes any offense difficult to run. Um, and then, you know, certainly uh, outside of Odell Beckham Jr., it's been hard to find consistency uh, at the wide receiver spot. Um, I think Ben's done a nice job, though. I think this offense uh, has it certainly has a high ceiling. Uh, I think consistency, which seems to be just about the word for the Giants this year, you know, more consistency in terms of finishing. Uh, the offense, though, has helped because the defense, especially against the pass, has not been nearly good enough. Field, the Giants are third right now in IR athletes, and it seems like every year they're towards the top of that list. Who who does that fall on? I think bad luck, guys. That's really what yeah. it is. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, look at some of the teams that are dealing with uh, injured reserve players elsewhere. You know, you got the Patriots, who I think are up to 15 or 16 now. The Ravens, they're way up there. Cincinnati, the Bengals are a team that they are way down in terms of players placed on injured reserve. And remember a couple of years ago, I think it was Chip Kelly's first season in the NFL with the Eagles. They were, like, remarkably healthy. And everybody said you can contribute to uh, Chip's sports science methods, which a lot has been discussed about uh, since he took over in Philadelphia. But since then, guys, they've dealt with a ton of injury issues. You know, last year the offensive line was way banged up, uh, you know, it's it just, I think that this is really, I don't want, I don't know if we can attribute to anything more than good luck or bad luck. You know, good fortune for teams like Cincinnati so far this year, and a little bit less fortune for teams like the Giants. ESPN NFL insider Field Yates with Armin in the back, 104.5 the team. Field, how in the holy crap is Ryan Fitzpatrick for the Jets playing at <laughs> such a high level right now? You know something, guys? Uh, he's played very, very well, obviously. He's had some Fitz moments, but sure. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick is a quarterback that um, in previous years, like there may have been less talent around him. I mean, that's not going that far to say that. Like he definitely is playing with the best wide receivers of his career right now. Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker have been tremendous. So I think in some ways what we've seen from Fitz in the past um, has been like a byproduct of those around him. Now the turnovers have been a critical issue, obviously, 
in previous seasons. He had like one year he was like over 20 touchdowns, but also way over 20 picks as well uh, back when he was with Buffalo. But it certainly feels like he's playing with a certain confidence. He's got very good wide receivers, and that has been perfect. But managing turnovers has been better for Pitts, especially of late, as the Jets have kind of found their groove over the past couple of games. Field, when you look at the Darrell Rivas situation, uh, when what's what's the latest? When will he play again? Yeah, I think there's a chance this week, guys. We'll get more information later on uh, Thursday. But you know, this is a player that you know we can sort of pick nits as to whether or not Darrell Rivas is still the best cornerback in football. But let's not overthink it. He's still one of the very best, one of those game-changing cornerbacks. Aren't there more than five or six right now in the NFL? And Darrell Rivas is amongst them. You know, this passing defense, I think we all sort of assumed it would be amongst the very best for the NFL, consider the investments in Rebus and obviously Antonio Camari, Buster Screen, uh, and really it's Calvin Pryor who was the player that was sort of overlooked this offseason, who has been the ascending one for them. Uh, he's really made a nice mark in his second season uh, for the Jets, but I think that whenever the Jets get Revis back, uh, and I think they have to play a little bit of a long range here. I mean, I think we have to be, obviously, it's a concussion. You don't want to, at any point, put a player at risk uh, by bringing him back too soon. And obviously, the NFL has a concussion protocol. But he was back on the field today, practicing for the first time in, I think, three-ish weeks. Um, but it certainly looks like there's a chance they'll have him on Sunday against the Titans. ESPN NFL insider Field Yates. Are the Jets a playoff team as of today? Um, I put it this way. They are a playoff caliber team that that the issue is pretty obvious, guys. There are three very good teams right now that are competing for probably two wildcard spots. And I don't want to say that every division has been decided, but if you look closely at it, both the, or all the Patriots, the Broncos, and the Bengals all have a three-game lead in their respective divisions with four games left to play. It would take a very unlikely occurrence for any of them to not win their division, which leaves the Jets, the Chiefs, and the Steelers, and certainly the Bills and the Texans at 6-6 six and six just a game out, all clawing for two spots. I mean, one of these teams I could certainly see going 10-6 and six and not making the postseason. Uh, you look at the Steelers, for example, like who's playing better right now than Pittsburgh? I mean, they played very well this past week, at least offensively, I should say. But look at their schedule, guys. In the next two weeks, they go to Cincinnati this Sunday, and they go to the Broncos, or they play the Broncos, Next Sunday, like it would not shock me if the Steelers were seven and seven. It also wouldn't shock me if they were nine and five. Uh, but the door is going to be open for one of these teams to make their move in the next two weeks. I think you look at the schedule; the Chiefs have the inside track, but I don't think the Jets should be counted out in any capacity. Fields, I'm about to uh, send my letter to Santa, and the top thing I want is Rex Ryan to hire his brother Rob in Buffalo. Is there any chance that happens? I don't think so, guys. Oh. I think that uh, listen. It's not the circumstances that, that, that anybody in the Ryan family envisioned with Rob being uh, fired by the Saints midseason, although you understood it was time for a change down there in New Orleans. The Jets, I'm sorry, the, I do that. You know, does that still happen to you guys at all? Like, oh, there are yeah. times when I reference Rex Ryan and I think about the Jets first. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. About once a Bills, show. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tough habit to kick. The Bills, I think, are certainly equipped defensively. Uh, coaching staff wise, and I think at this point of the season, like there's probably inside. Like I don't think that even even if Rob isn't hired by the Bills, it's not like Rex isn't going to pick his brain. And like there's certainly uh, there's certainly information and intel that Rob can offer. Whether it's just an extra set of eyes, you know, hey, what do you see from us? What do you see we need to do better? What do you see that we're doing well? That stuff adds up. Um, and even if Rob isn't hired, I do think there's a possibility that. No, I, I, not a possibility. I think uh, I think Rex is going to be leaning on him and saying, whatever you see that could help us, let me know. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. And he should. ESPN uh, NFL insider Field Yates with Armin in the back. Bills, Eagles this weekend. What is your favorite storyline of this game? Man, I think I have to look past the obvious of, you know, all the, the revenge of Shady McCoy and the reunion between him and his old team. Um, you know, I'm curious on guys. And I think that I'm curious on what happens with the Bills passing attack, Sammy Watkins, because you look at the numbers recently, and the Eagles passing defense has been shredded over the past three weeks. Now, a lot of it came late for Tom Brady and the Patriots last week, but he still managed 300-plus yards and three touchdowns. Uh, but after two consecutive weeks from Matthew Stafford and Jameis, went completely diced that secondary up. 
you wonder what kind of day could be in store for the Bills. They are tied for the third most rushing attempts this season. So it's not as if Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, wants to throw the ball 45 or 50 times per game, but I'm not sure who can cover Sammy Watkins in this Eagles secondary. I would not be surprised to see him have a monster game. And I think there's probably some fantasy owners out there who are entering the first week of their playoffs who are saying, yeah, I'll take that too. Field, you're, uh, of course, also uh, one of the hosts of the Fantasy Focus Football Podcast. Uh, the playoffs starting for just about everybody. What's the number one piece of advice you have? Don't overthink it, guys. This is not the time that you want to go in there and shuffle the deck with your lineup. And say, well, you know, I, I'm uh, the guy that I haven't been using in my lineup, but he intrigues me. Um, you know, real, especially at running back, I think it's a spot that is so difficult to find security at. So, I think that uh, the most important thing you can do is certainly sort of stay the course here, uh, trust your studs, and like when it's, I know people, I'm getting questions, a lot of questions about players like, you know, even Devontae Freeman against the Carolina Panthers, but he's been so good for the Falcons all year. I'm not, I'm not benching Devontae Freeman right now. Todd Gurley's come back down to earth a little bit. I know, I think what I would rather do is I'd rather lose with guys that have sort of brought me to the postseason, not performing, then overthinking it, starting a guy as a dart throw and having him give me a bagel. You know, that would be tough for me to swallow in terms of production. Uh, so I think that the most important thing you can do, dance with the ones who brought you there uh, and hope for the best, guys. I, I encourage people to, uh, you know, to even if you're not in the playoffs, at least keep setting lineups and make me, uh, you know, at least having some fun during the final four Sundays of the season. Yeah, I'm hoping Armin took notes, Field, because uh, you know I'm the two seed in our work league, so I have a bye week. But Armin okay. has to defend himself against our producers. Yeah, so. I'm going against like my it. stupid <laughs> producer, so I need to beat him. <laughs> and I say that with all love and affection. Field Yates, uh, ESPN NFL insider, at Field Yates on Twitter. If you're not following him, you're doing it wrong. Field, thanks for your time today, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.